I am waiting. I think we are now. Five seconds. It's doing okay. something. Are we there? Good morning. To you. Okay. Let's see where we are, people. Let's do this. Facebook. I think we are live, Marquita. Good morning. Say good morning. I'd say we definitely are. All right. All right. Um. Well, good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to see you again and, and uh, join you here on Zoom for our what has become our weekly Q&A with the Queen, yes. the Queen of Mortgages. Thank you once again for, join, for joining me. Um, oh, this week, Marquita, I think, um, let's see if we're going to get some people to log on, but, um, you know, I've had several questions this week and uh, conversations about refinance. And, um, you know, in this current climate, are you seeing, especially with the interest rates being what they are, and we've been talking about the forbearance, right? So are you seeing more people moving towards refinancing, you know, or are they, you know, hopefully they're listening to us and deciding to continue to make their payments and not do the forbearance, but are you seeing anything different? And again, with the current, you know, with the rates, you know, dropping or as low as they are? So, yes, yes, we are. So uh, actually, uh, prior to, you know, COVID really becoming a, a thing, you know, mm -hmm. we had rates that had dipped below 3%. So right. a lot of people jump on the board to refinance during that time. And then I would say the last, what, four weeks, which seems like it's been four years, mm -hmm. very unstable with everything that happened. And now we are having some normalcy back. So rates are back down again. Yeah. Um, average rate on a 30 year fixed. And of course, you know, quoting rates is interesting because, you know, everybody's scenario is going to be different. So Correct. give you a disclaimer that the average rate right now, 3.23 naturally, I mean, nationally, just the, the mm -hmm. average fixed rate. Um, but we are putting some rates, you know, below 3%, just depends on the actual scenario. So absolutely, um, more people now are saying, hey, maybe I should take um, advantage of this time to, to look to refinance. So we definitely have fielded more of those calls. Um, just had a closing on, I guess it was yesterday. No, mm -hmm. uh, the 30th. So that was the day before yesterday. I guess that was Thursday where one young lady was able to take the equity in her home, pay off some high interest debt oh, wow. um, for private mortgage insurance and still have a cash flow of about $400 to the better. So that's wow. a life-changing actually situation. That's a win, absolutely. These, you know, during these times, like, you know, there's, in, there's still things that can be done, maybe a reset, um, and something, you know, do some take something good out of it. So I definitely uh, think it's not a time a good a good time to think about refinancing. Yeah, well, I mean, let's face it. Um, you know, maybe it isn't a good idea for people to sell. There are some place times or scenarios where they're, you know, it's better for someone to stay in their home because yes. even though we're we we're in this this health crisis, uh, the price or home values are not dipping but the rates are still very attractive that mm -hmm. people want to move and not necessarily maybe can move, can take advantage of the refinance. So there's a couple of things I wanted to kind of go back to. Um, okay. Give us some examples of, you know, the different scenarios that would um, dictate the interest rate that a person, a homeowner would get or okay. you know, if they were to consider refinancing? So there, there's several things that are going to go into that. So I would rather just maybe lay out the three reasons why someone would refinance and then mm -hmm. we can talk about why or how the rate would vary based on that. I mean, okay. the first one would be to just lower the term, maybe okay. shorten the term that they're going to pay on that mortgage. So instead of maybe 30 years shortening to 15 years or 20 years to mm -hmm. pay off the loan faster. Right. So that would be one reason why somebody would look into that and the interest rate on that is going to vary. Typically, rates at a 15 year are lower than the 30. However, we just had a very um, 
I mean, our market, the money is so cheap. They're almost mirroring and almost looking like the same or not really much of mm -hmm. a difference. So shortening the term would be one. The next would be um, to, to lower the rate, to lower the rate and the payment over time. Right. So to lower the payment, you might have a lower interest rate. That's going to lower the payment. If you're somebody that bought with a lower down payment and maybe have private mortgage insurance, you would drop that. So that could lower the payment. Mm -hmm rate you get based on something like that is going to be dependent on um, the loan to value. So how much equity you have as well as um, credit score. So some of those things are what makes the rates vary and why you can't necessarily have a specific scenario. But mm -hmm. I'm almost like if you have a thing that starts with a four, you definitely should at least explore the conversation. Okay. Right? Because we know the national average is at 3.2. 3.2. So, so that's so a significant. At significant. least have the conversation. And then the reason why you would actually refinance or consider it is to take cash out mm -hmm. and tap into some of the equity that has been built, you know, over time. And, you know, what could you do with a uh, cash out? I mean, during these times, I feel like cash is king. So when you're doing a cash out refinance, it does have some effect on the rate. You're pulling equity out of the house. So it might be a small add on there. However, if you're doing like the scenario I said earlier, you're paying off high interest debt, Maybe that would take you years to pay off and wrapping it into a lower term, I mean, a lower interest rate um, um, thing, such as your mortgage, mm -hmm. makes more sense, right? Then yeah. have something at 26, 29% and may never be able to pay it off. Instead, you're tapping into the equity and putting it into a lower interest rate instrument, such as a mortgage. That's what I meant to say earlier. And I mean, maybe, you know, maybe you're taking your equity and putting it to work. For you, maybe you, you're doing a business venture, right? Money for that. Maybe for little Johnny's education now. I saw yesterday, shout out to all of the, the graduates. It was announcement day. So I saw a lot of people out there giving, giving their announcements. A shout out to the kids um, that are, you know, moving on and going to college in the fall. We know, that, you know, the year, year didn't end like you guys wanted, but it was uh, very encouraging to see. I saw a lot of... Um, yeah. Uh, you know, people announcing their kids so that was very cool but maybe you're going to need some money for that room and board now you know because you know too the first thing you have the freshman 15 when you yeah. go to college <laughs> you eat up everything the first two weeks like you're just in shock so you got a mm -hmm. fun meal plan so maybe you need some money for um education or maybe you just want to build a cash reserve yeah honestly Right now, you know, unprecedented time. So maybe just having, you know, some cash on hand versus having it in the house. And like I always say with money, it's like, uh, it's one thing to have it, but is it working for you, right? You have equity, but is it working for you? Exactly, exactly. You know, the reason use to consider it. a cash out. Right, but use wisdom, of course, we don't want a repeat of 20, uh, 2008. And that's the thing, where we are today in this particular um, mm -hmm place in the market most of the homeowners have equity so you know this it is, is correct it is an opportunity for them you know it's not like again which is a, a clear indication that this is not like 2008 where people use their homes as atm machines and when the market dipped they had no equity and they had no choice in a lot of scenarios as we know how that played out um so question, I have a question for you. Yes. If a person does decide to refinance their home, mm -hmm. what, may, what type of savings makes sense? For example, someone that's going to refinance and only save say $83 and it's gonna take them five years to make that up or something to that effect. When does it make sense as far as the savings? You know, when, they're, when the person is deciding whether to do this, based on their scenario, what makes sense as far as a savings and how long to recoup? Because let's face it, there are closing costs with the refinance. You are purchasing your home again, but there are some savings in doing that versus a purchasing it. Right so I wouldn't now. necessarily say you're, you're, you're purchasing again, but I will say there are some closing costs involved. And if you have an escrow, you can set up a new escrow account. So that may um, add some fees into the overall number. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then you do have an opportunity to do a no cost refi. And I want to say probably no cost and air quotes because the cost is still going to come. It's just going to be a matter of whether you have a rate a little bit higher and the lender gives a credit to cover those costs. So nothing's free in America. Don't get it Absolutely. twisted. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, um, you were asking when when does it make sense or when when will you break even? And I, I you know, always give that same disclaimer. I might as well be an attorney, right? Because I always say sure. first, it depends on everyone's specific scenario. Absolutely. To the Absolutely. client, I thought, hey, you know what? You're saving $105 a month. Um, you've only been in the house for a year, but you save $105. But the cost of the refinance is going to take you, uh, I think mm -hmm. we came up with um, 52 months to okay. recover about, what? what is that, five years and two months or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, My mm -hmm. math is totally off, four years and four months. So I was kind of like, you know, really not, if it was personally for me, it's a no. But they're like, hey, we're in it for the long haul. We're going to live here more than that time frame. And we do feel like this is the bottom line rate that we could ever see. So we're right. still move forward and it did create some you know there was an opportunity to, you know skip one housing payment so that created some cash flow in their budget as well because when you refinance you end up having you know one payment off mm -hmm. and it's not that is off it's just when you close mortgages are paid in the rear so you have that one month where there's no payment so for them it made sense to do it but i do think everybody has to look at their scenario if you know you're not if you know that you just bought the townhouse to live there for four years to gain equity to go get your bigger house Right. And the refinance to save a hundred dollars a month is going to take that same scenario, 48 months, mm -hmm. years in, in four months, then why would you do it if you already plan to sell? Right. So, or you have, you know, a, a plan. So I always say that, I mean, I love to see the recoup of it at least in three years. I think that's a, a good number. Yeah. Um, um, we, you know, we don't think life is going to change, but things actually do change. So I think three, three years is a fair number. But again, you know, I think everybody has to look at their, their overall scenario because two, for some with the larger loan amounts, they're looking at the overall interest cost. If their true plan is to pay the loan off and, you know, keep it in the family, they're also looking at their overall interest cost. So it, it just varies, but I like three years personal opinion at, at you know, at, that's about, yeah, I mean, anything beyond that is kind of like, yeah, what, what's our end goal? Right. Well, as we said, you know, the average person's in their home about seven years. Right. You know? So if you're already three, four years in, mm -hmm. and, but then they may decide, well, hey, but I mean, to me, again, they just, it, it, everybody is different. Everybody's um, different. I, I definitely say you have to have, you know, goals. And right now they're saying about 50% of Americans have some type of equity in their equity. home. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just, my, my, my advice again is, you know, what's, what's the goal? What's the okay. goal? Is it is, you know, higher yeah. debt is to pay off the loan and yeah. just look from your specific scenario. But I definitely think it's worth having conversations about this right now. Right. So, um, private mortgage insurance, you touched on that. So, yes. um, the private mortgage insurance, can you elaborate on that? Because when they go to refinance, sometimes, you know, I'm going to say if they don't have the 20%, is there an additional fee that the homeowner borrower is going to pay? Or are there certain criteria with that in a, with a refinance? Yeah, exactly. So if they don't have, if you don't have the 20% equity in mm -hmm. those to drop private mortgage insurance, if you're currently paying that, then um, you would basically, we would reinstate the mortgage insurance. I mean, it would still be there, it would just be at whatever that clip is based on that appraised value. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have enough equity, then you would still have the monthly mortgage insurance. The number would be adjusted. And some, some companies are like, actually, if you have the mortgage insurance with them already, they're transferring it over onto the new loan. Um, mm -hmm. but Actor might be a little bit different. Right. So still not a reason not to actually do it. It's just obviously the savings won't be as great. But right. again, what, what was the scenario for wanting to do the actual, you know, refinance? So right. um, again, just looking at the overall cost. But dropping private mortgage insurance on FHA loans is pretty costly um, monthly. So just that alone for some people, if they just keep the same rate, but they have the, the equity, is enough to create the cash flow that they want to see to, you know, to right. so um, definitely something to look at. I mean, even as $150, $200, that's $200 that maybe you could put to work for you in an investment or start a business or whatever you're trying to actually 
um, achieve. So I would say, yes, um, smart homeowners should be having a conversation about refinancing their mortgage, whether it be with me or, you know, whoever they're, they're actually working with, at least, you know, take a look at it because right. what, what I'm just saying right now, I mean, we're in the middle of something, we're just unprepared. And I'm like, exactly. you know, if I'd have known what I'd have known, then I might've looked at taking some equity out of my own house and sitting on it just on, right. on cash. Right. But that's, yeah, just because, I mean, right. one, who, who was going to predict yeah. staying close, cash is king. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so again, going back, those of you that are in, in a four or better, please have the conversation. If not with the queen, your lender, your, your mortgage company, someone to see if in fact you qualify for the average at least, or at least something that would save you some money. Would you agree to that Marquita? Yeah, I definitely would. And I, I said this week, we were not going to talk about the elephant in the room, which right. we have up to this point, we have not. And I probably won't say it, but I am at least going to bring it up that you, you still need to be currently employed to tap into the, the refinance and no loans can be in forbearance to actually do it. So you can't do a refinance if you put the loan in forbearance or you have other loans that are in forbearance outside of the student loan stuff, which they have several different reasons why somebody loan would be deferred or forbearance. So that's just something to know. I'm not going to talk about the elephant anymore. Uh, we're just seeing and watching the data climb. At the end of the day, we think about 15% of people are going to be in that. And at that time, you would not be eligible to do a refinance. So something got to be employed. Absolutely. And got to um, be employed. Correct. And, you know, and I know we, you know, we touch on it every week and I am again, but please guys, please talk to someone. Um, I don't know if I'm mentioned this I don't think I did last week but I had a call from someone that um said you know a friend or told them that they should probably go ahead and take advantage of this forbearance um they're selling their house and uh, at least they can save some some money but again to reiterate what Marquita has been sharing with us guys that like she said there's always a cost and even though they may not report against your credit Fannie Mae is not seeing that as they're saying you can do it, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Marquita, but if you go to refinance, you know, after you come out of this moment, well, first of all, let's just go back to the beginning. If you do a forbearance, three months, six months, a year, whatever, just know that that money will be due. They're not tacking it on the end of your loan. And if they say they are, get it in writing because basically it will balloon when it's time to make that next payment. So all right. that was, you know, the forbearance period plus that next payment will all be due, whether it's three months, six months or a year. And you will not be able to purchase a home or refinance in what, 12 months at least? Because um, I, I mean, I, I don't know. You know, we're, we're still saying. looking for, we're, we're looking for forward guidance on it. I mean, I we don't have the exact guidance, so I don't want to just frivolously speak, but I know you will be impacted with trying to have future financing getting, you know, getting done. And, you know, we just keep saying, hey, it's a forbearance, it's not forgiveness. Um, they have mean free money, guys. They have they have a succession of plans that they think about that they're saying they might go through. Like, first, if you don't have the balloon, then can we come up with a payment plan? And then after that, is it the possibility of tacking it onto the back? And some of them have said that, just make sure that again, get the information in writing. I don't care what Jane operator number 677 said on the phone, mm -hmm. it, it just make sure you look at it. And then I, I feel like, you know, this could be a, just an underlying issue. Like I said, I don't want to be the dead horse. If you can make your payment. Well, make it's a reality, it is, I know. It have makes all of your options available to you. Exactly. So he was going to sell, and I'm assuming she probably was going to look for financing forward to buy something, but she was just going to put the house in forbearance just because her friend said so. Right. And my theory is if you can make the payment, make it. Don't just right. jump on the bandwagon because we hear that in this CARES Act that, hey, they're going to do this. No questions asked. You can do this forbearance. I am passionate about it because, you know, I keep hearing it and I just mm -hmm. don't want to see people put themselves in a situation and then, you know, ignorant. Ignorance is not bliss. And, and um, <laughs> honestly, ask, do your research. But if you are in a situation and you need to do it, 
you know, you can do what you got to do. But again, you know, just know that at the end of that period, it's all going to be due unless like that, okay, that's a huge possibility writing otherwise. Hmm? That's a huge possibility. There's several just there's always unintended consequences. Uh-huh. And it's like if somebody can at least give you a heads up on what those consequences are versus being blindsided, then just, you know, just he did, you know, he did advice. That's that's yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in closing, I'm just going to try to just I'm not going to go deep, but I'm just going to go over a few little numbers here. So this we're in May. So we've um, wow. Mm -hmm. We got, uh, we're, I mean, here we are in May. I mean, I don't, I feel I like know. we blinked and here we, it was March and now it's May. Well, this, this is the information that I want though. Like I was like, you were supposed to, you know, give us what, give us these numbers. That's what I want to know. What's yeah, going well, I'm going to tell you so far right now, we've got some, our numbers are up in Prince William. Um, okay. We are um, not, not by much, but the good news is we are up since March. So March to April, close of April. We're probably mm -hmm. up with about uh, 30, 37 new new closed sales. So that's okay. actually good. Again, in my opinion, we're talking, um, you know, 30 and, in, in, you know, into March, April, people went under contract and they actually did close on them. So currently um, from right now where we're at, oh gosh, I printed off the wrong report. Don't tell me I did that. But nonetheless, um, our actives have also increased. So we're up on the actives and, um, you know, so I'm seeing a slow, steady, a slow climb where people, I think with all this pent up energy, I've seen this week alone, I've seen a lot more activity here in Prince William. Um, so what does, can I, can I just, can you clarify what is an active? Does that mean a house that's actively? I'm glad you asked that question because we get this all the time. So active and active under contract and they are to me those are all active because okay they're on an active an active is a new listing and that or a listing that just went into our system versus okay. put it on the market now if you see a status that says active under contract there are contingencies pending for example home okay. inspections financing which could and un unfortunately could sometimes you know kill a deal and it's you know goes mm -hmm. back on the market so that okay. property is still active in a sense. They have an offer, but they still have some some criteria, some some things that they need to meet. Some so you you're saying that there's more active listings now that you've seen a climb between March and April. Correct. Now, Correct. More there's active an listings coming on this week. Absolutely. And okay. and again, I mean, if we were in a non-COVID market, we would probably see you know even more than what we're looking at currently, simply mm -hmm. because. You know, this is the spring market. Everybody wants to put their home on the market. Our our veterans are relocating. They're still moving. So there's still people out here looking. You know, just this morning alone, I was in Fairfax and um, I noticed that there were, well, there was two coming soon. Um, however, there were in a certain three to four bedroom, um, there's about 21 new uh, 21 new listings out there. So, okay. um, so do yeah. you think that's a reaction of, well, it's the spring market. People still need to sell and that we're suggesting that this is our new normal. So it's, you know, if I need to sell my house, I just need to get it done versus. Yeah, to get it done. We'll do what we have to do. Yeah. Just like, you know, people are ready to go back to work. I mean, we, we've been in this two months now, pretty much. So we're, we're we kind of got this thing down as far as going to the grocery store and interacting, social distancing, masking up suiting up basically putting your mask on your gloves your, your you know when you're going to show houses booties we put special uh guidelines or in place for people showing houses you know for those where it's still occupied having the sellers to turn on lights open doors so people can you know kind of peek in the closet or the pantry or go down into the basement without touching you know door handles and so we've kind of gotten accustomed to that for those of us that are still out here moving, you know, doing it um, and just kind of coaching your clients through it. So, yeah, I think with the pent up demand that this is going to be the new normal, because I mean, who's to say, you know, when we're going to have a vaccine or when something's going to, you know, kind of lessen this fear or, you know, this because I mean, let's face it, it's a hidden, it's a hidden monster. We don't know, you know, who has it or who's whatever. We're not going to get into that, but making the, the proper preparations 
Um, people getting out there, they're wanting to get back to work. People do have to move. Our military is out there and we've accepted this as our new normal for now, at least anyway. And the government, I mean, things are opening back up so far. Uh, Virginia opens up what, May 8th. So, you know, um, okay. we've got to make adjustments, you know, restaurants, all that. So we're going to get back to it. So okay. you know, real estate is still moving. So more active, what other numbers you want to share? So I want to know, I mean, I'm a homeowner. I want to, you know, make sure for me, I'm like, you know, are my value stable? Is the housing market still? Yes, moving? yes. I'm going to tell you, yes. Again, we haven't okay. seen a decline in value. I haven't seen a decline in value. In fact, value's gone up. Um, it has gone up, you know, year wow. over year. And even since the beginning of the year, I mean, I was looking at the, you know, the four different counties. I pretty much service, as you know, from Arlington all the way down here to Prince William County. I like to say the southeastern corridor of Prince William County. Um, but, you know, uh, I've, I've definitely, um, you know, we're definitely seeing prices have gone up since the beginning okay. of the year. I mean, like in January, I mean, there was a huge spike of new listings, you know, okay. and then we saw a lot of those kind of go into closing in March or, you know, right around that from January through March, that was good. Then things kind of dipped a little. But honestly, as we talked about last week, I see a, I see us kind of pulling back towards the uh, end of third, fourth quarter. I think we'll start seeing that. So where things would traditionally start to slow down around that time, I think we're going to see a, a new spike by then. Because at that point, oh, I, I'll say the country will be open. Yes. So we'll see yes. that that change. Um, and, and numbers are going to continue to increase. So we are not, there is no decline in our, um, in our home values. And, um, you know, so it just depending on where your price point is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, I think what, what piqued my interest or what I, what I heard out of that was that year over year, we're actually still. We're moving up. Yeah. Despite everything that has happened. So. And the beauty and all of this. Housing around here is amazing. Uh -huh. Yes. And the beauty in all of that is the interest rates are still very attractive for a home oh. buyer <laughs> to take advantage of, yes. you know, purchasing and, 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 you know, being able to get a home and not worry about, oh my God, my, my value is going to drop. Right. I don't see it happening. Well, we're forecasted to be in a low rate climate for, you know, quite some time. Yeah. And it's interesting as Americans though, we are, I always say we're apathetic. Like we, we figure stuff is just going to be here forever. Right. Mm-hmm. This is this is what it is. So I think this at least shows us that there is some sense of urgency. And I do think for the next two years, there will be, well, at least the next year, there will definitely be, you know, lower than average rates that will offset some of the fact that the housing prices are higher. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a great time if you're it's somebody. Great time. Take advantage, you know, and if yeah, it's the yeah, right time for you to buy. Take advantage. Yeah. Right. And if it's not the right time to buy looking to, you know, have the conversation um, and to see if now, if you, you know, if this is a good opportunity for you to refinance. So, yeah. and as always, you can reach the queen of mortgage, send her a private message or yes, hit please. her up on here. And you've got my contact. I'm happy to share her information. And certainly I'm available if you need me. Um, again, if nothing else, just for a resource, we're here just trying to keep you guys in the know and uh, because uh, we want to make sure that we have some educated buyers, homeowners, and that you guys are not caught off guard with a lot of the jargon that maybe you've missed or no one has explained it in depth. So, yeah, jargon, propaganda, whatever you actually want to call it. Um, as always, I end my part just saying, you know, we're going to share the information that's real, relevant, and raw. And that's what's going on in the real estate market right now. There you go. Well, thank you once again, Marquita. I'll see You're you welcome. same time, same channel next week. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys, please be sure to share your questions. I mean, we'd love to address whatever they are. Um, bring it to you live next Saturday. Have a great rest of the day and weekend. Stay blessed. Olivia. <laughs> I see her. All right, guys. <laughs>